Today I'm excited to be checking out another mechanical keyboard from Drevo. Drevo have released a couple of interesting keyboards, notably the Gram R 75% keyboard and the Calibre 71 key keyboard. But the best part is that they offer these unique layouts at lower budget prices, where most other budget brands don't with the usual 10 keyless and full sized options. And this is another keyboard in their lineup, the Drevo Excalibur. Opening up the box, we have the keyboard itself with the dust cover, which is always a nice inclusion. We also get a manual and some warranty information, then a micro USB cable with a ring plastic keycap puller. And here we are with another 75% keyboard, so it's approximately 75% of a standard full-size keyboard. So we get a quite compact keyboard with 84 keys, that is only 3 less keys than an 87 key 10 keyless keyboard. So it really really is close to a 10 keyless keyboard in terms of primary functionality, but we save that bit more lateral space and we get a unique looking layout. Being a 75% keyboard, it makes it exactly the same as their Gram R keyboard, and it really is but upgraded. Unfortunately, I don't have the Gram R on hand anymore, but the first massive difference is the build. The Gram R didn't have a bad build by any means, but the Excalibur now has a completely metal build, so this includes the switch mounting plate as well as the bottom casing. This is made from aluminium and is a low profile slab style design with floating keys, so there's no top shell exposing the key switches from the side. The metal looks and feels great, and it's just a simple rounded rectangle with the edges chamfered just a bit to take that edge off. There's of course no flex or anything, and has some pretty good heft to it at about 720 grams, so it's solid in the hands and solid on the desk. This comes in this black version, but also a silver version which may come across as more metal looking, and looks quite nice actually. The finish is a slightly textured satin look which doesn't pick up fingerprints and is easy to clean. It's kept up well so far but there are some tiny nicks on the edges, especially the corners. And this build is pretty crazy because it is a CNC milled aluminium case which usually goes for a bit more money. We also get two flat rubber feet and two stand up feet so the inclination can't be adjusted, however the standing feet can easily be taken off but then you have nothing at the top bit so it would have been nice to perhaps get two extra flat feet to fit in there to give us the option. And the branding on the back is pretty minimal, but notice the typo. It actually made me doubt myself that I've been getting the name wrong the whole time, but yeah, I found it kind of funny. On the rear we have our micro USB port, and this is another upgrade from the Gram R now having a removable cable, making it easier for transportation as well as swapping out keyboards on your desk if you have more than one. The lighting is consistent with the Gram R, using just simple white LEDs, but this is something that I absolutely don't mind, and it's something I actually appreciate as it gives a more subdued aesthetic that matches anything, there's no rainbows or anything going on here. There are a few simple effects and modes that I personally never use on pretty much any backlit keyboard, and there's also some custom lighting profiles you can make which can make sense for various programs. This keyboard is completely filled up on the top, so there's no spaces between clusters. This grouping does impact on the key positioning and the keycaps. The nav cluster keys on the right hand side are still one unit keys, but the heights of the page up, page down and end keys aren't standard. Then there's the shorter 1.75U right shift key and 1U alt, fn and right control keys. In short, it can be somewhat difficult to replace the keycaps, however there are keycap sets that cater for this, as well as compatibility kits you can get, but the other solution is to get uniform keycaps or blanks, like DSA or XDA profiles or something, and somehow fill it up as the heights no longer matter. The keycaps are an interesting one. First of all, it's using the same gamey looking font or typeface which you may or may not like, Personally, it's not my thing, but it is labelled as a gaming keyboard, which is a shame. When I first saw the keyboard, I thought these were some really nice matte keycaps, but they actually have this rubbery coating over them. I think whether you like how it feels when typing is dependent on the way you like to type. I don't have the best typing technique, so I pretty much use three fingers on my left hand and two on my right, and then my left thumb for the spacebar. So I like to slide across the keys, especially with my right hand. And because of the rubbery texture, it's a bit more grippy than usual, so sliding does feel a bit awkward for me. The difference isn't huge, but it's still noticeable. 
However, on the other hand, it may be better for some people and I guess the softer feel also feels pretty good. There are a few defects where the coating didn't adhere properly or there was a cut, which is annoying but you might get lucky with yours. On the silver version with white keycaps, it probably wouldn't be noticeable. Taking off the keycaps and we have thin 1mm double shot ABS keycaps and double shot just means that the legends are a different mold of plastic so it'll never fade away. The rubber coating just sits on top of that and would probably eventually fade away. And underneath these we have Cherry MX Blue key switches. This is another feature that they've stepped up where they previously used only Altimu key switches. We all know what Cherry MX Blues are like so they're clicky and tactile with a medium weight and here's a quick sound test. The typing experience is more louder than usual, and that plays with your mind in how they feel, making them seem more clicky. It's quite a bit louder and feels quite different to the Vortex 75% I have, which also have brand new Cherry MX Blue key switches, even though they have similar builds. But the Vortex has a steel plate rather than aluminium. I had the same louder experience with the Drevo tire thing as well. This is available in other key switches of course, with the red, black and brown Cherry MX key switches, but also the cheaper Altimu switches where you can save about $20. There are some secondary functions on the keyboard which is controlled by the function key. First we have a built-in numpad which is shown on the front of the keycaps. Personally, I'd never use it, but it can be useful to others. On the top function row, there's a few shortcut keys and media control keys, but because the number row is comprised of R4 keycaps, meaning that they're both the same tall height, those symbols are difficult to see. Some of the printing is also quite messy for the front symbols as well. We can switch between 6 key rollover and 24 key rollover with the 0 and minus keys. That just means that we're guaranteed that amount of presses. And finally we can lock all the keys if need be by pressing function and tilde. Opening up the keyboard was quite difficult. I actually tried myself and couldn't pry it apart so I had to find someone else who had the board and ask them. Thankfully, Zoology on Reddit answered my call and managed to take it apart, so I tried again and it just required a bit more effort, but I had to be careful so I didn't scratch the case. Here's the case, and as said before, it's aluminium that has been CNC milled, and we can actually see the router passes on the bottom surface. The rim is about 3.6mm thick, and the base is about 2mm thick. This is the new Vortex 75% board for comparison, and the Excalibur is actually thicker and heavier, so it's quite impressive for a value board. The mounting plate is also aluminium and is 1.5mm thick. Here's the PCB and it's pretty standard and clean. For each switch, we actually have through hole LEDs which has been an absence in many keyboards that I've checked out in recent times. With the older Gram R, some people said that they were having issues with latency. I personally didn't have that problem with my Gram R, and I haven't had any latency issues with the Excalibur being a newer PCB. So overall, I'm really happy with what Drevo have done. Even though they already have a 75% keyboard in which has been really successful, I'm happy that they've given us more choice in this unique form factor with a more premium option this time round. The only real negative I have is the cheap thin keycaps. I personally don't like the font on them, especially with this really simplistic and clean design. The rubbery coating is questionable but it does look nice, so I'd definitely recommend perhaps looking at some aftermarket keycaps later down the line, turning it into a pretty premium keyboard, like with these Vortex keycaps. And here's Zoology's silver version with his Max Key SA keycaps, looking very sleek, and thanks again to him for helping with the disassembly. Moving on though, the positives are great. 
we have the option for Cherry MX Key switches this time round, as well as Altimu switches making it much cheaper. We now have the detachable micro USB cable, again the unique 75% layout giving us more options that don't cost the fortune, and finally the full CNC milled aluminium build paired with the simplistic and sleek slab design is just really great to see. The silver version does look very appealing and comes across as more metal looking, so that may be the one for you. Of course if this is too expensive, even with the cheaper key switches, there is still the Gram R, but if you can it's probably worth upgrading to the Drevo Excalibur because it's packing some great value.